Hey, what's up, Scribe Squad? It's another day, it's another dollar, and um, it's time actually to do another interview. We're gonna interview some dope people we have on the channel, uh, people we've done reactions to. In addition to that, we're also gonna interview, you know, music artists, could be politicians, could be motivational speakers. But today, today, none other than today, the best day ever. We are going to interview a homie of mine, uh, somebody who I think is super duper dope. He's an artist, he's a rapper, he's a man of the people. He talks about anything and everything. Um, and we're gonna tap into it with him. Please, uh, you know, round of applause while you're sitting at home in your seats. My man, Grizzy Hendrix, thank you for being here. Talk to the people real quick, you know what I'm saying? Yo, 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 finally, I'm having an interview with you, Scribe. Was popping, was good. I'm here. Uh, yo, shout out to you for just, you know, reaching out. And I like I like what you're doing, too. I like that all of you, too, you know, artists are really starting to expand as far as, like, no more reactions. Well, not no more reactions, but they're doing interviews and everything. I feel like this is great for the platform. I'm all in. And thank you. Thank you for being here. You know, we're going to dive all the way into it. Now, of course, your fans know who you are, but, um, you know, this interview, I feel like is, is a great opportunity for you to branch out and, and gain new fans as well. So we're going to, you know, hit the basics. We're going to do deep dive questions. We're going to do a little bit of everything. But the first question I have for you is when did you fall in love with music? Uh, so the first, yo, know, probably when I was like 11 years old, when I was 11, my my cousin, I used to see him, you know, beating on the table and rapping. And that was the first time, like, I ever was just like, oh, I got to do that. That's exactly what I want to do. Teach me how to do it. I don't care. I need to learn. And, yeah, I just started from there just studying him. He was, like, one of the first, uh, I guess you could say, rappers. That was, like, he's not known or anything. But, you know, I was just studying him and trying to get familiar with the craft. And uh, who are some of the, you know, like, your favorite uh, artists, like, you know, as you were around that young age and even now that inspire you? Um, I say, let's see. All right, so there's this artist. I don't know if anybody's familiar with him, but his name is, like, Stack Bundles. He's from Queens. He was, like, around my area, but he was, like, an underground legend, like, real big. And he was probably one of the first that was, like, doing it for my neighborhood. But he was known. He was like with Jim Jones and Dipset. And yeah, he was just like one of the biggest inspirations at first. Like I wanted to dress like this dude, talk like this dude. <laughs> it was it was it was low-key creepy. I was, <laughs> on some, I was on some stand. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's funny. So did you grow up in the East Coast? Like what area are you from? Yeah, I grew up uh Laurelton, Queens, New York. And yeah, pretty much from New York. Uh, was born, born and raised my whole life there. Yep. Are you still out there now? Um. Yeah. Yep. So what is still it? Out. What has it been like? You know, since like you know the whole like COVID thing. I feel like we should touch on it. It's kind of hard to avoid the fact that we're not in person. We're here on Zoom because we are in the middle of a freaking quarantine. What has life been like? Has it been different for you? Yeah, like, well, I mean, even at the beginning stages, like, it was like you couldn't do anything. Like, all studios was locked off for us, so it was hard to, like, really even just try to record and, you know, focus on my craft. I couldn't do that. And now it, it's kind of opening up. Like, I see a lot of people out there, like, there's actually traffic now. But I'm still on my conspiracy stuff. I think it's weird. I'm not going to lie. All right. Well, you got to hit us with the conspiracy, though. Hit, hit me with it. What is, what is your conspiracy about this? <laughs> Yo, I think <laughs> I think they set this up. And they like they figured out, like, oh, man, the COVID wasn't really going to – it wasn't going to be as, as effective as we thought it was. So now we got to kind of create this race war that's going on. With the, with the, and I'm not saying racism doesn't exist. Don't take that the wrong way. I'm just saying, like, you see how the media plays. Like, they, they pumped up this COVID so much. All of a sudden, we're able to protest next to each other. 
Like, I'm seeing people right next to each other. And where did COVID go? <laughs> like, Where did it go? You know what I'm saying? Like, where did it go? And me personally, I've been at a, a few peaceful protests. And I was, but we've seen, like, I'm from Cali, right? So, you know, out here and I'm in New York, too, has been mass protests, like, everywhere. And so, well, now, that I guess they are saying, though, that the numbers are spiking up. I mean, I feel you, though. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look at your face. <laughs> I feel you, though. I feel like, if anything, what we should do, and here's what I say about anybody who thinks people have conspiracy theories is crazy. I look at our past as a government, you know what I'm saying? Things that were quote unquote conspiracy theories have been turned out to be found true. I know this is like a little far fetched, but we look at UFOs, right? The government has came out and said that UFOs are real. We're not saying that they're alien, but the actual existence of these unidentified objects have been, you know, confirmed by the government. I just feel like we should question everything and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with questioning if something is right or wrong. And at the same time though, I do feel like how it doesn't hurt us to wear a mask. Like let's not be stupid. So it, whether it's real, not real, whatever the situation is, I feel like it should go both ways. For me personally about the whole vaccine situation, I'm probably not gonna get the vaccine. Like I, cause I don't, and it's not even, it's not even a thing about it specifically the COVID thing. It's just anything when it comes to having new vaccines, you want vaccines to be around for years and years and years and be tested time and time again. Because there's been several vaccines in the past that have caused, caused females, specifically African-American females to have like cervical cancer and things like that. But if you're on that first wave, you don't know what the defects are going to be like 10 years from now. So I'm just, you know, very cautious and question everything, ask two, three, four questions. And just don't believe everything that you see just because such and such says it. Because there's a lot of people right now, our lovely president, that believe everything <laughs> that this man says. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that he says or everything that the media says. And I feel like none of those are is, is healthy like at all i think if anything like we should just be like you know one eye sleeping with one eye open constantly because anytime they're pushing something rather like regardless of what it is they push pushing something super super hard you have to ask yourself is this truly what it is or is this a distraction from something else and so that's what i'm asking myself not to say like you said that racism isn't real like because these issues are real issues george floyd amon arbery brianna taylor these are real issues, but at the same time, it's like, mm, why is that you're pushing the divide so much instead of the issue, right? Exactly. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I put it in a nutshell, right? In a nutshell, that's what Grizzly was saying. Okay, so the next question I have, my dog is over here acting up. Like he's really going in. Like <laughs> he's trying to get some of the interview. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He trying to get some of the, the interview attention. Like it's it's a whole situation. Next question I have is like, you know, as as a fan, we see that you do like a lot of face coverings and, and like face painting. But what I want to know is like, how did that start? Did it start as like, okay, I'm gonna cover up my face so nobody knows me, or like how, where what was their original idea with this? Like it originally started because I, I used to do like a lot of shows and things. And in those shows, people used to keep comparing me to J. Cole. They said we looked alike. So at some point it was starting to annoy me. And I was just like, all right, I got to figure out a way to veer off from being J. Cole's clone. So what I did was I, I did this video called J. Cole Link Huffing With Me. And then I put on, <laughs> I put on, uh, I put on face paint in it and everybody was like, yo, who's this dude with the face paint going at cold? Even though I wasn't going at cold, but that's what they were thinking. And from there, it just kind of like sparked the idea like, yo, I'm gonna just keep this because one, it, get, it gave me my own identity. People stopped calling me cold. And then two, it was just like, yo, I love the whole, I don't even know if I'm saying this word right, but that anonymity, whatever that word is. Like, I love that anonymous, like, a vibe where people are like, yo, who, who's the dude behind the mask? So I just kind of kept kept with it. And that's where it like stemmed from. Okay, speaking of Cole, did you hear the new song Cole said? And if you did hear the new song Cole Draw, what is your opinion? I gotta hear it, I gotta hear it. <laughs> that song is 
fire. I don't care what anybody says. That song is like from for for one, the production on that joint is like amazing. Two, the words that he was saying, I feel like people are taking it out of context. Like they're thinking he's he's more or less trying to attack no name. She's from Chicago and you know in her thread she was saying whatever she felt about the artist with big platforms not saying anything. So I felt like he was just saying instead of like, because she's real smart, obviously we know that. So he's saying instead of you, you know, kind of using that whole holier than thou attitude, come at us with more understanding like, all right, I get that you don't grasp everything about our history. So what, what, what I need to do is teach you as opposed to, you know, kind of like condemning you for not knowing it. Mm -hmm. And that's really the that's the song in a nutshell. But people, I gotta listen to it. I haven't listened to it yet, so I can't give my opinion on it. I'm gonna react to it today. I bet like because I wanted to hear what everybody had to say. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to hear. Yeah, I was yeah. like, some people were like, Cole was being disrespectful to her, like which to me, I'm like the J Cole I know and I'm a fan of would not be disrespectful specifically to an African American female on a on a song like. That's the cold. He called the queen. <laughs> so this is what I'm trying to like. I, I got to hear the song myself and then divide my own opinion about it. But I, I keep hearing, hearing mixed reviews. I'm going to find out today. I'm for sure going to do a reaction and, and put a, and put it up about my opinion about the song. But, hmm, interesting. Very. I interesting. really want to know what you think, too. I will let you know. Like after I do the reaction, I'll, I'll message you. I'll let you know. I'll be like, look, please, please, I got. I really gotta hear what you think. I just because I think it's interesting to me, and this is just without even hearing the song, though, is that there's such a controversy about him specifically speaking about somebody who's a female artist, and I find that to be interesting in this space of like, I don't know if she claims to be a rapper. To be honest, I haven't heard her her music like that. But let's say, I think she does claim to be a rapper. So like a female rapper and the first song that he makes specifically about a female rapper has all this controversy uh, like behind it. And I'm like, for me, I just wish that the whatever it, it was taking place was something different. I wish that his first song about a female rapper would be about uplifting a female rapper or specifically putting a female rapper on. Cause my whole thing is you have about eight, nine guys that signed to Dreamville and you have Ari Lennox, you know what I'm saying? Who's an amazing singer, but you're in a specific position, J. Cole, to put on a female rapper and specifically put on a female rapper that has a positive image. So, you know, like my whole thing is in society right now, it's just constantly pushed like the over-sexualization of female artists. And it's just right, like, right. my whole thing is if we could think of nine different male artists, like across the board, we could think of Takashi, which, you know, I'm not really a fan of, uh, uh -huh. J. Cole, Kendrick, Drake, just Duale. They're all across the spectrum of what type of artists that they are, or even like DaBaby, like mumble rappers. Why isn't that we can't think of nine or 10 female rappers that are super duper successful that are all across the spectrum on, on mainstream? And that's my whole thing is just like, why are we not promoting more than one type? We are constantly promoting this over the sexualization, whether it's Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, Meg Thee Stallion. It's the same image over and over and over again. Like, and there's so much more. So whether it's me or somebody else, my whole thing is let's, let's put these other females on, on the same platform. It's either the over sexualization of female or it's, the quote unquote socially constructed like lesbian chick, like young ma, blah, blah, blah. Like that's the image they want to show us. But it's like black women and specifically female rappers like come across all like the whole spectrum. And so my wish is just that like, why doesn't he have a female artist that, uh, that he's taking under his wing to help promote in a positive way? Like why not? No, I, and I feel you a hundred percent. The only thing I would say is I feel like he kind of did it in a roundabout way because if you think about it, him dropping this song, it brought so much attention to her now. Now people gonna be checking for her, even though he might have not said, yo, No Name is a dope rapper, you need to go see her. He kind of had like a little artistry debate with her. But I feel why like- why does it have to be gonna... roundabout? I have an issue with that. Like- that's a fact, that's a fact. I get that part. 
it, it's like I have an issue. Why do we have to beat around the bush instead of just doing what we need to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're in this position. It's not just him. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're just talking about him. But there's so many several other people that are in the position to put somebody on, like uh, TDE, like Kendrick Lamar. Why are you not putting somebody on? Um, like, Jay-Z has female rappers under him, like Rhapsody or whatever. But his number one artist right now is Made the Stallion, which pushes that over sexualization. Like, so I'm just like, why as See, but you know, you know what that comes down to though it all comes down to capitalism that's what it's really about because but, they know they they right know right now the market is just what you said the over sexual sexualization the art the the girls showing it whatever and then it's like we know if we go for this artist that's speaking positive uplifting the, the female black women in our community, we not going to sell as much. And, and, and that's, that's, the, the, that, that's the problem. That's the problem is the fact that they think that it won't sell as much. But in actuality, there's more females who can relate to something different than that right. particular image. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's a fact. It's just a, it's a complete misnomer. And you're letting the powers that be, and we really want to dive all the way into it. Like it's a slavery mentality that literally goes back to the overall sexualization of African-American women. Like African-American women were raped in, during slavery. They would mm -hmm. have the kids, but the kids wasn't welcome. You know what I'm saying? And then not only that, I feel like it's just like, you go into like African-American men feeling degraded, like, you know, it's just, but it sucks that it's our own people now. And we have these platforms that we really could, could push a whole different agenda, but we're pushing the same agenda. And I have, I have a total issue with that. But, See, I but then that, all, that all, real quick, that also forms on us as consumers, because mm -hmm. the, a lot of females, they, they have the ability to be like, yo, we not standing behind that. We not standing behind the, the, the just Cardis and the maids. And no, we need more of a variety to show our our other side. If they keep showing that, and then soon as soon as Black Lives Matter ends, y'all jump back on the wave. But okay, it's time to turn up and shake our butt. Right. Like, that's what's going. It's it's going to continue to be that way. And I, I t we could talk about this for hours. But like, yeah. I, <laughs> that's the wave. That, that's the revolution that I want. I want that to be the next step. Like, and, you know, and I can only hope, and I can only be a, a catalyst and a, a, a part of the change. But moving on, since we were talking about like inspiration, tell us about you know your Eminem being an inspiration to you um, in your life and as an artist. Um. So basically, I like before I really, really got into the rap, I was on Tupac. But then I started, you know, uh, checking out M stuff. And then he just became a big, big inspiration for me because, you know, not only is he a lyrical monster, but the dude actually be saying stuff in his music. And so that always captivated me, like how a white artist was able to kind of like come into the black culture, but really set himself apart from everybody else and really tell his story. I always found that to be like amazing because obviously it's a black art form. So when you're able to come into the culture and get everybody to be like, yo, this dude is dope. I got to tilt my hat to you. And so I just became a fan of him ever since and just always followed his music. He's the reason why I'm so outspoken in my music and I call out whoever. Like, he's just like, he's my guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, speaking of calling people out, we got to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? Hey, so, <laughs> I, I want you to explain, I wouldn't even call it a beef, but explain this whole Lord Jabbar debate situation, you know what I'm saying? You gave your opinion about what Lord Jamar had to say. Oh, the whole Lord Jamar thing just pisses me off because I feel like Lord Jamar isn't, a lot of times he isn't sincere with it and he's just trying to create the, these divisions amongst the, 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 the culture. Like he's trying to put black against white within the culture and, I, and nobody could tell me different. Like, okay, I get that he wants to say M is a guest. I still don't feel that way. M came out himself and said he feels he's a guest. That's just not, my, I don't care who says white people are guests in hip hop. That's just not how I feel about the culture. I don't believe in that. So when 
when he kind of puts everybody against each other, I just feel like it's detrimental to the culture. It's not helping. It's not progressing it. All we're doing is just going to continue feuding back and forth like, yo, this dude, he ain't really part of the culture, but this dude, he he's part of the culture. It's like, come on, that shit is whack, son. Like, I don't know, yo. That shit pisses me off. Like, that, like, that don't make you mad when we constantly feuding between each other, like, I just think it's it's dumb when Eminem is a, is a he's in the position to really affect people's specifically uh, white people's views. You know what I'm saying in a positive way and move and move with it uh, like our agenda for. It. So I feel like it's just it's non productive. That's a point right there. <laughs> you feel me? That point you made right there is the exact thing I be telling my cousin. Every day, he put he he employs black people. That part, like right. it's, it's not and it and not only that, but like it, it's not even in the situation where it's kind of like a um a liar Cohen. It's something that's like positive. Like he's literally helped put black people on and be in a position to like win for themselves. And so I'm also curious to think what you think about Vlad TV. I know, like, some people think that he's the feds. Like, what is your, what is your opinion about the situation? Yo, Vlad is just the illest culture vulture. I feel like Vlad, what he does is he capitalizes off people's, uh, you know, real personal problems and uses it to, to just build his brand even more. Like, and I feel like somebody like that is a culture vulture because you're coming in a culture solely to just get content and, and like milk people for their for their stories and the things they've been through and you're not really trying to help. Is it like what has Vlad done other than and I'm not gonna say his his content isn't good. It, his content is very captivating, but it's like you're doing more harm for us than than helping us because so many people have either got knocked, locked up, gotten the beefs because of him people shooting at each other because of his interview. So it's like, bro, what are you really doing? <laughs> I mean, okay, so to play devil's advocate, I'm not saying I don't agree, but to play devil's advocate, people say that he's being a journalist. His 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 uh, objective is just to document, regardless of what it is. And I get what you're saying, but you're specifically documenting black culture. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why That's are you bad. not documenting white culture the same the same amount that you're documenting black culture? Why is it just black culture? Because you know you're going to get the clicks and the views. And so I get it. But at the and same it, time, what is his really direct involvement in what other people are doing? He is just doing his job as a journalist, quote unquote, right? See, but the thing about it is where I could say that's not real, real journalism because why do you only focus on everything negative about black culture? He, ne I've, I've never seen this guy really have just a, a bunch of positive interviews that show us in a good light. It's either we getting locked up, we look stupid, why are we doing like it's just crazy i've never you got to show me some positive interviews i mean i watched the interview the other day where he interviewed bill duke like and, and you know what i'm saying oh, it was, it, yeah and that wasn't oh. that wasn't odd like for me those interviews to me it seemed to be the most interesting and i, I would like yeah. for him just to have like a whole segment of just like motivational african americans like you know what i'm saying like let's just have that segment and for me, that would be like, okay, all right, now at least we're getting both sides of things. We're getting the drama, we're getting blah, 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 blah. We know they get your clicks and views, but still have this positive, inspirational content. You've made your money. You're going to continue making your money 30 times over. Why not exactly. add an aspect to it? Okay, so moving along, though. All right, next beef we got to talk about is how the whole situation with Screwface get started. Like, what happened? Oh, see, that shit started because, like, at first, everything was supposed to be just, like, super friendly and competitive because he had put out he was the best rapper on the platform. And I agreed with the whole sentiment, how he was coming out, like, yo, I'm the best. I thought that was G, like, mm -hmm. because everybody's so scared to go against each other and rub people the wrong way. He was on some, yo, I'm the best. So I was like, yo, I'm cut from that same claw. So I said, bro, I'm the best. So... Behind the scenes, we was like, he had actually reached out to me first and was like, yo, bro, you could have just said, uh, you could have just said my name or whatever. So I was like, yo, bro, like, I was actually just speaking in general, you know what I'm saying? But 
if you want to take it there, we can take it there. <laughs> you feel me? And then so from there, it was, we had set up like, all right, we're going to do this battle thing. And it just got super messy behind the scene because I don't, and this is just from me, me being, being like watching him, he moves funny. And then I talked to certain people. I'm not going to put their names on blast because I don't know if they want to put that out there. But mm -hmm. they even said, yo, bro, trust me. I know he moves mad funny. And Sideways. From, yeah. So from there, it's like everybody started looking at me crazy. Like I'm just this, this YouTube radical <laughs> just trying to cause destruction to the YouTube world. And it's like I'm just being me. I'm just always going to keep it a buck. So that's, that, that shit just got out of hand. I find it to be interesting um, because I'm like, I, I'm from like the opinion of you. I think, you know, having a positive like competition, you know what I'm saying? Just honestly, I'm a better rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's great for the platform as far as I'm concerned. Like the whole, even if it's a battle back and forth, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's good. That pushes us to be better. Like as artists, you should have that. And that's part of hip hop culture is just to have the, I'm the better. My whole thing is then when you start to get personal and you bring other stuff into the situation, that's just not like, then you're going out of pocket. You're going left and, and it's just like, why? When it was literally on, I'm just the best rapper. And I feel like people like, you know, talk about family members and stuff. It's like, that's when you, that's when you take it and left and then it, it becomes a whole situation. And it's just like, you know, we're in 2020, so beef is a lot different. But in the 90s, people used to get killed off of beef. Oh, like, yeah. you know, people lost their lives off of beef. So I just find it to be interesting. I guess that's a perfect segue into my next question, which is just like, do you consider yourself to be a YouTube rapper? What does that mean to you if you do or if you don't? Um, see, I don't, that whole YouTube rapper phrase bothers me. I feel like I'm a rapper that raps on the platform of YouTube, but I'm not a YouTube rapper because I feel like that, that puts you almost in a box is like the SoundCloud rapper, like, uh, you just got content on SoundCloud. You hoping to pop off that. And it, and that's really where it ends with me. For me, I just feel like, yo, I'm an artist. You know, I rap on Instagram. I rap on social media. And that's it. I'm not a YouTube rapper, though. <laughs> I feel it. Um, I don't I don't necessarily take, like, offense to the term, if that makes any sense. Um, for me, in my head, how I classify it is it's just, like, that's either your biggest platform or that's the platform where people recognize you the most is on YouTube. I right. think I think a lot of people do take it though that way of the sense of like, oh, you're just on YouTube. You're only good on YouTube, blah, 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 blah. I find it to be almost like uh, like a cool compliment too at the same time. Like, cause if you pop off on YouTube, we know there's people on YouTube who sell out tours. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, versus making millions of dollars off of being quote unquote a YouTube rapper. So I don't really get too caught up in the term, but I do find it to be like interesting, like your perspective about it. So I would, I, the other question I say is like, what advice would you give to somebody who actually wants to use YouTube as their main platform? Like as, the, as far as like getting started or tips on how to grow their fan base? All right, so my advice would be to the people trying to build like a fan base is don't piss anybody off because it, it what it does is it, it shuns you. Like I'd say reach out to a lot of the reactors and, and just try to build relationships with them. But if you're like me, who's just super blunt and honest, that route's probably not going to work for you because you're going to see there's a lot of sucker ways in a lot of, <laughs> a lot of these people. So you have to, you kind of have to put your pride aside and, and, and go with the, okay, I'm going to kiss some ass here. I'm going a, I'm to a act like I like this person, even though he's a douche. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I would just say, if you're going to go that route, be prepared for it. Because you, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to rub you the wrong way. Your integrity is probably going to get stripped. A lot of your morals going to go out the window because you're going to realize like, oh, okay. This guy's not who I thought he is, but cool. I'm going to just go with it just so I could have that that relationship with him. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's, it's politics and everything. And I find that to be super duper interesting, like to me. 
I'm just like, hmm. But uh, some people will say to play devil's advocate, though, having beef with people pops people off, though, like, at the same time. If we look at Screwface and we see his beef with Upchurch, like, his numbers kind of soared, like, after that. Or if we see, like, Dax and Crip and Screwface and Crip's beef, like, that that popped all of their numbers off at the same time. Not to say that they're not talented, but that, that certain level of attention on them could have played a role into people discovering them. And so I, one thing I always say is at the end of the day, we, we always can give advice, but you got to figure out what's best for you. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, 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 that's that in a nutshell, too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You for sure got to figure that out. But um, next question, who's your uh, favorite collaboration that you've done or favorite song and why? Um, hmm, let me see. Dang. What, what what are some of the dope features I've done? Uh, I feel like that what that that feature I did with Dwayne uh, was was fire because I feel like he 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 was able to like actually come off on that record. But my favorite favorite one thus far is the one I did with Luke, like because everybody was really getting that Luke talking about yo he's he's just a flippity hippity bibbity bibbity doobity <laughs> like type rapper. And then he comes on the track and he really delivered the concept. So that that was just like it it I was proud, not that he was able to do it, but more so like, yeah, I told y'all he could rap. Like he gets busy. And that was really my whole thing. I was just happy that he was able to execute it. And that's a perfect segue because my my next question was gonna be like, do you feel like mumble rap and I put quotations on that because that's everybody's different opinion should be canceled, and if you do, why? Um, see, I don't feel like necessarily, like I feel like you can come on tracks and just you know use different cadences and you don't always have to be saying something in your music, but I feel like if within your little like, see, for me, mumble rap is when you're not your content is not saying anything. Like your content is always lean, lean, drugs, drugs, girls, girls, that's mumble rap to me. But if you come on and, you know, you could flip some political stuff and some conscious stuff in, jibbity, bibbity, bobbity, <laughs> like, <laughs> and get people to mess with it, then I'm all for it. I'm not gonna cancel that. I just don't like the message of it. The message is what deters me from, you know, that those people who do that style. I agree too, because if you if you listen to like Kendrick Lamar's DNA, like he took the same cadence and the melody of mumble rap, but actually had something to say. And this that. is what I said about like people is like that to me is talent. Cause it's like oh, it's, yeah. it's not that we have an issue with the style of what it is that you're rapping, it's more so that you have a lack of content and things that you're like, you know, you're actually uh what should we call it, say. Um, all right, a couple more questions. So what do you feel, and we kind of touched on this a little bit at the beginning, but we'll like, you know, directly address it. Like, how do you feel about George Floyd's death, uh, Black Lives Matter movement, and anything else you want to add? Um, well, one, I feel like everything is coming, well, I, yeah, I feel like everything's coming full circle now when it shows us, like, all right, one, us as a Black people, like, we really have to, we really weren't on the same page. We weren't focused enough to, to like what was basically how they always been treating us, how they always been killing us dead in the streets. Like, do you see how, how much division is just amongst us black people? And I'm not saying that it's our fault because clearly this was a system created. It got us all fucked up. But I'm saying at some point, because of this, we sh we should have already been like focused, like yo, we got to get it together. We we got to formulate some strategy. Like even with the looters, you had the looters who some people just running in, just getting Jordans for themselves because you know they don't got nothing, poverty. Mm -hmm. And then you got some people who are strategically trying to figure out how can we get rid of the corporations and stop them from like basically eating off of us. We need to all be on the same page. It, it, it shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't be like, that's the part that's whack to me. But again, I attribute that to, to, to hip hop because hip hop is the biggest influential genre. We can actually get everybody on the same page. When Jay says, yo, wear this 
wear this uh, type of shirt. We do that. When this rapper says, yo, this is what's in right now, we do that. So if that's the case, use the message in hip hop to get everybody on the same page. And I agree. I agree. And here's the, and here's like, we go segue, right? So we can segue that into, this is why for me, it's important for these big artists to step up. This is why your voice matters because you have the you have the platform to unify everybody, and this is why. And I'm gonna be honest. This is what to me is why Don Lemon was like, "Where is such and such? Where is such and such? Where is such and such?" People think we just want you to make a statement. No, no, you signed up, and they may not think that they did. You signed up to either be a role model or some type of leadership role when you got all this uh, position of power and you have all these people who are watching you. So yeah, I am looking at Jay-Z and I mind you, they've been doing things, Beyonce, et cetera, to lead us. But where like, and this is the problem with our generation, it's like the 60s, they had Martin Luther King. You know what I'm saying? They, they really had a leader or Malcolm X that yeah. unified everybody. And it was like, oh, MLK doing it? All right, we'll be rolling that way. And that's the problem with our generation. We don't just have a, one particular leader. And I'm gonna be honest, like this is, I feel like Colin Kaepernick had the opportunity to do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? When he first took the knee, he yeah. had the opportunity to me to be vocal, right? And that's the, that's the criticism that I have of him is that he'll do a lot of stuff behind the scenes but we need speeches because the reason why we have people who people made speeches back in the 60s is because it was a unifier it, it was a way to get everybody on the same program so i'm like he had the opportunity to come out and, and make speeches instead you know he chose to do a lawsuit and, and to sue the nfl and i understand going that route but at the same time i feel like we missed his vocal presence because when when that when they was taking me we were looking around and it was like all right are we finna be down with the revolution are we gonna be oh well i guess we not doing on it and it's the same thing now where it's like we we're waiting for that one person I feel like to, to, to bring us all together. Yes, I understand that there's lots of people out there who are, you know, speaking and, and, and trying to bring together within their own community. But the problem is with, with the African-American community and the movement in general is like, we need one person that we can just get behind that, that speaks and everybody agrees. And we can't yeah. get down on the same now, page though. I, I agree with you that the, the, the vocal aspect is definitely missing big. But then you got also the people who are so like just clueless that they're saying things like, come on, man, give us a tweet. We need a tweet. And it's like, a tweet? A we tweet talking about a, do nothing. What, what is a tweet gonna do? Like we, we 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 need somebody like you said who's who's out there vocally speaking to everybody. Because once you get us all on the same page, like Man, you know what I think we miss? I think we need a Khalid Muhammad. He, he, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he passed away. But he would like, yo, if we had him, I'm telling you, we, we'd be out there. <laughs> but they don't want us to have that, though. Think about it. If we really had that, half of the stuff would, it just would not be going down right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, it just, it just wouldn't be, they don't want us to have that. And I think there has been solid attempts. I don't know if you follow Sean King. Um, and wait, uh, you like Sean King? I'm I'm neither here nor there. I'm right here. Oh, right. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm neither here nor there. I'm right here. I appreciate the fact that he brings awareness to situations, you know, what oh. I mean? like because he does have a major prep platform. He posts these videos and blah blah blah. And we might not have known about certain situations had it not been for his, his account, etc. So, like, I appreciate that. But I'm not, I don't know, because I, I heard some things on this side. I done heard some things that. So when he does stuff that's good, I'm going to celebrate it. When he does stuff yeah. that's bad, I'm going to talk about it. Like, <laughs> I'm going to be neutral when it comes to that. And I mean, if anything, like, it just, it's just crazy how this reminds me so much of, like, of how important um, our political leaders are within our own community. Like, people want to talk about, you know, the presidential election, et cetera, but it's really about making sure you understand the legislation and where you stay at. Uh, you know, voting on the city council, like, voting on uh, the mayors, like, because these are the people now that are making the decision. Who's, who's the lead DA? Like, do you know who the lead DA is in your county? Like, 
to right, right, prosecute right. individuals, to get certain uh, city, city credences passed, like certain laws is passed. And if anything, we've learned just how much we haven't been paying attention compared to like the 60s civil rights movement, how like directly involved and informed they were. We, I feel like our generation is just kind of like, we were aware of it, but now we're now like in action about things. Like, yeah, yeah. We're now like taking steps. But okay, interesting, interesting. All right, so last thing we got to talk about, we got to bring it all the way back to the music. Let the people know, like, what's your latest project, what you got coming up next, and where can people find you, follow you, listen to you? All right, so the latest joint I just dropped was the single uh, called Get Richard Die Trolling. That was uh, basically directed at, you know, Takashi and the whole trolling. Uh, I just dropped that. That's on... You know, just follow me at Insta uh, on Instagram at Grizzy Hendrix. Uh, my Twitter Grizzy Hendrix. Everything Grizzy Hendrix. Um, and yeah, I'm working on. I don't know. I, right now, I wanted to drop like an EP. I'm, I might think about dropping it. I don't know right now. Like I'm in the midst of just trying to figure things out because this world is so crazy right now. So it's like I'm not really in album music mode, but I don't know what I'm dropping next. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. All good. And uh, tell me, Spotify, Apple Music, title, everything. Oh yeah, like uh, Spotify. I got my all my controversy albums on there. Like controversy one, controversy two, three, four. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, SoundCloud. I got Bandcamp. So it's like on all of those. You just Grizzy Hendrix, controversy, and everything will pop. All right, you heard it here. You know what I'm saying? I want to thank Grizzy for being here on the channel. Make sure you guys check out his channel on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, everything. Follow him, support him. We will be doing more reactions to his music videos here on the channel as well. And it's your girl, Scribe Cash. Love you guys. See you next time. Make sure you hit the like button, sub button, bell button. And you can ring my bell. Ring my bell. Hey, my bell. Ring, ring, ring. You know I have to sing the song. <laughs> See y'all next time.